Hey there, my name is Alyssa Matesek and I'm a book editor with a background in the publishing industry. Over the course of my career, I've evaluated and edited hundreds of novels, everything from contemporary women's fiction to dystopian sci-fi thrillers. What's one thing they all have in common? Dialogue. Dialogue is a critical component of any fiction story and getting it spot on is really, really tough. You want your characters to sound like real people having real conversations, but sometimes when it's written out on the page, it just doesn't sound quite right or fully natural. Today, I'm going to talk through my number one pet peeve when it comes to dialogue in fiction stories. I'll also be going through some examples of how you can edit lines of dialogue to avoid this mistake. Hopefully this helps you spot points of weak dialogue in your own stories and make your character's conversation smoother, more natural, and more realistic. Okay, let's get started. Do you notice anything strange in the following line of dialogue? Hey mom, I said as I entered the kitchen. Hi honey, what's up? I was just thinking about dad's birthday. It's next Thursday and he's turning 65. My number one pet peeve is when writers jam explanatory information or backstory into a conversation where it doesn't belong and frankly doesn't make sense. In this example, the writer is clearly trying to hand over information to the reader via dialogue. In this case, that information is that the narrator's father's birthday is next Thursday and that he's turning 65. My biggest pet peeve isn't about what's being said, it's about how it's being said. We can assume in this case that the mom in the scene already knows that the dad's birthday is next Thursday and that he's turning 65. She wouldn't need to be reminded of those facts by her daughter. So clearly the daughter is only saying this information in this, in this specific dialogue for the reader's benefit. If the characters in the scene are recapping information that they already know or reminding each other of something, that's a signal that you should try to relay that information to the reader in a different way. Luckily, there's an easy rule of thumb you can follow to thwart this dialogue pitfall. Try putting it in the first person or third person narrative rather than in the line of dialogue. So going back to the example, here's a better way for the writer to share the information about the dad's birthday, but still within the same scene. Hey mom, I said as I entered the kitchen. Hi honey, what's up? I was just thinking about dad's birthday. My dad was turning 65 next Thursday and we hadn't planned anything yet. See how in this version, the narrator keeps the dialogue authentic by not telling the mom something that she already knows. Instead, the narrator shares the additional detail in an aside directed at the reader. Let's go through another example. Jake and Riley met at their designated spot at his mailbox. They had lived next door to each other since kindergarten and used to play hopscotch in their cul-de-sac. These days, they traded hopscotch playdates for secret smoking sessions. Today's meeting was quieter than most, with both of them seemingly lost in their own thoughts. Remember that time you twisted your ankle playing hopscotch, Jake asked, handing Riley a second cigarette? Of course I do, Riley laughed. I still have that scar on my ankle from falling onto the nail in the road. I've been meaning to ask you, Jake looked down at his feet. Did Ryan ask you to prom yet? Here, Jake reminds Riley of a memory that they shared before changing the subject awkwardly to Ryan asking her to prom. So clearly the writer wants the reader to know that Riley has a scar as it's probably important and comes up at some point later on in the story. But as written in this conversation, it's a bit awkward bringing up the scar since the real meat of the conversation is about Ryan asking Riley to prom. So let's take a look at a revised version of this scene. Jake and Riley met in their designated spot at his mailbox. They had lived next door to each other since kindergarten and used to play hopscotch in their cul-de-sac. Riley was reminded of their childhood game every time she looked down at her ankle. She had landed on one of her hops wrong and fell on a stray nail in the road. These days, they traded hopscotch playdates for secret smoking sessions. Today's meeting was quieter than most, with both of them seemingly lost in their own thoughts. I've been meaning to ask you, Jake looked down at his feet. Did Ryan ask you to prom yet? In this re version, in this version, the reader learns from the narrator that Riley has a scar rather than from Jake through the dialogue. This allows us to condense the conversation to only the most important lines, and it allows us to propel the scene forward without getting derailed by the discussion of the memory. So 
To recap, if you have a particularly long scene of dialogue or if you're trying to use a character conversation to relay contextual information to the reader, take a step back and ask yourself, does it really make sense for the characters to talk about this point or this memory in this scene? Or am I just placing it here for the reader's benefit? Inhabit your character's minds and ensure you aren't having one character tell another character something that they already know. That way, your dialogue scenes will sound much more natural and organic within your stories. I challenge you to take a close look at the next novel you pick up and see if you can spot any examples like this. I promise you it pops up all the time. All this isn't to say that you can never have your characters talking about a memory or recapping information. It's just worth taking a really close look at those scenes to make sure that's the best way to have the conversation flow. I hope this short workshop helps you strengthen your own character dialogues in your stories. If you're interested in hearing more fiction writing tips and advice on how to get published, be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to hear from you, so feel free to send me an email or leave me a comment below. Thanks so much and happy writing.